What is up, Scrub Fam? Pat here, and it is Wednesday, my dudes, which means waifu shirts go on, and it's time for another limited review. Today, we're going to talk about the green and yellow cards. We talked about the red and the blue cards, as well as the grading scale last time. If you guys missed those, links are down in the description below. Link, speaking of links, uh, we're going to talk about our sponsors for this video. Alec Pastrana, BeardedCollectibles.com. Alec is going to hook you guys up with the best prices on Set 9 sealed products, so definitely get those pre-orders in. Also, shout-outs to the homie Dalen Mack, Terminator Power, Las Vegas, February 21st weekend. Going to be three days jam-packed of some of the most hyped Dragon Ball Super tournaments all year. Uh, it's just going to be absolutely amazing if you could afford to go. I would definitely consider doing it. So let's jump into the actual video, guys. Let's talk about green first. We're going to talk about Android 20. Again, like we said in the last video, leader quality is really high in the set. Like, really, really high. There's very few bad leaders. Android 20 is no exception. This is a leader with a very high floor. His ceiling isn't as high as, say, Frieza, but he is a super consistent deck uh, where he gets to look at the top three for an Android every turn. Uh, obviously, it's the same drawback as Frieza where he's not drawing real cards on the front. Uh, but what makes Android 20 a little bit better on the front than Frieza is that there is something in the realm of 20 Android cards in the set, which is much higher than the 13 to 15 that Frieza had. So there is a huge variety of targets for Android 20 to hit, including some serious bombs in the super rare slot, which we'll talk about when we get to the multicolor video. Um, and then on the back side, he has this really interesting effect where if you have no battle cards, you can pay one to get a three or less Android back in Resmo with its skills negate. Doesn't seem like much, but there are some seriously good three drops in this set that are Androids, and we'll talk about those in this video. So the best part about him, like I said, his floor is really high. He's super consistent. Uh, you can't keep him off of things. He will eventually get there. He doesn't have the crazy high critical ceiling like Frieza does, but... He will out card advantage you by just having more battle cards than you over the duration of the game if both people are just constantly trading resources back and forth. And for that reason, I'm going to give him an 8. So, Android Absorber. Um, there's only two Android 17s in the set. One is really bad. One is pretty good, actually. But for the most part, when you consider that the top end of the chain is kind of hard to get because one's a super rare, the other's an uncommon that you only have maybe one or two copies of, and then one of the 17s you don't really want to play. It's not really worth taking a chance on this chain. I just would not uh, recommend playing it, so I'm going to give this cell a 4. Next up is Cell Junior, Minions Unleashed. 2 drop 15k is playable rate. That gets us at least a 5. I don't know when you would ever actually use his Activate main, though, outside of generating a 10 cost or a 10k power token to swing with for game when your opponent is at 1. I'm going to give Cell Junior a 5. Next up is Android 19, Energy Fiend. This is something that Green desperately needed. I don't know why it's taking us so long to get this card. Most other colors have had these cards since set 5. Uh, so it is a standard discard a card to draw a card for a one drop. Excellent one drop. You're going to play it every single deck you get it in. Card quality is a bit higher this time around. So I'm going to give this card a 7 when I traditionally used to give these cards an 8. Because again, card quality is a lot higher for the commons and uncommons in this set. Perfect example of this is Android 18 Covert Combatant. This card is power creeped to hell and back. <laughs> this is a 3 drop 20k critical barrier. That is a very good stat line. Um, previously, 2 drop 20k's or like 3 drop tw uh, you know, 19k's with like dual attack or something were like the overcosted beat sticks. I still can't believe this card was made in Android from set 2. This is a 2 cost 25k critical barrier. Which is nuts when you think about it. Um, this card is just incredible. Just It's a common too. Just, just jam as many as you can get. This is a high 8. It's probably the second best common in the set. Next to Chill. Next up is Android 16 Prototype Power. So if you guys remember from the set 8 review. We talked about how great the 2 cost Green Whis was. Because it kills something that's 2 or less when you play it. With a relevant stat line. Android 16 is the same thing but better. Because he has the upside of if you kill him with a skill, he gets to tap an energy, a blocker, or a leader, which is really, really, really sick. Um, very, very good card. Uh, I'm going to give it a 7, and it's a high 7. I want to give it an 8, but some of the 8s this time around are just really ludicrous. So, uh, again, card quality is higher. Next up is Android 13, Red Ribbon Raider. 4 cost, 20k is okay stat line. Union Absorb is never going to happen unless you get super lucky with all the cards um, in your pool. Uh, if your leader card is an Android, when you combo with this card, though, it has a 2 cost 10k combo, which is not the best, but when you do combo, you get this card into play in rest mode. Perfect sneak attack on turn 2, block a damage, and then get a 20k body. 
This card is actually quite good. I'm going to give it a 7. I would play as many of these as you can if you are any other Cell or Dr. Jarrell leader. Quick Sweep, Android 17 is the previously mentioned uh, bad Android 17. I'm going to give him a 3. He doesn't really do anything. Even if you were to consider this Activate Main where you could just get this guy back, you're paying 1 cost for a 4K uh, with 5K combo power. So you're basically paying 1 for 5K combo power, which is super not that good. And again, you have to have nothing in play. So this is really a desperation move. Even if you wanted to say this is the successor card, Jiren does successor so much better. So just play Jiren if you open him. Next up we have Topo, Gaze of Justice. Uh, this is a one cost can trip. It doesn't actually replace itself, but it makes your opponent nega card. So in the, in the overall sense of card advantage, you're both going, you're gonna basically break even on this card's exchange. It also has the upside if it leaves play due to successor, uh, or you uh, your opponent kills it with a skill for whatever reason. Uh, then they also have to nag another card as well. This card is a six, like it way, really, it's basically a good cantrip in most colors. If you are in Jiren, it's a seven, and we'll explain that when we get to the Jiren leader. Most of the universe, 11 cards, uh, I'm going to give two grades, one for Jiren, one for, uh, you know, standard. Next up is Kokade, Technique Unleashed, one cost 5k with no real effect. Um, is a three for most people. If you were a, in the Jiren leader, I would give it a five. I just, I'm not enthusiastic about pitching a card from my hand to get this card back. Um, obviously, it doesn't really do much of anything uh, outside of Jiren. Next up is Zoire, Justice Spin. Uh, this is another one where it's a basically a sideboard card if you are not Jiren, so I'm going to give it a four because all it really does is answer the Super Air Frieza. It gets a little bit better if you are in Jiren because it is able to be searched, uh, or you can just play it as a, uh, a quick snipe to deny a combo power uh, early on in the game. So I would say it's closer to a 5 or a 6 in Jiren. Uh, Avian Assault Ganos is next up, and he is a 3 cost 10k, which is really bad stat line. Uh, when you combo them, you put them to play in rest mode, which I don't really care about putting this card into play. Uh, if it doesn't have relevant attacking stats in the later parts of the game. Uh, it does kill something that's 3 or less when you play it, but you have to sack one of your own guys to do it, which is not a trade I really want to do. Uh, there's just a lot of better removal in the set, so I'm going to give Ganos a 4. Uh, I really think that there are just better picks than this card. Better picks? Here you go. Belmont, Double Devastation. This card is incredible for an uncommon. 4 cost, 20k is a good stat line. Has blocker, so it protects your life. You know much we love those. Activate main lets us play this card for free, even if it is situational, which is a nice bit of upside. And when it comes into play, it kills anything. This card is excellent for an uncommon, and I would jam as many of them as you get. I would give Belmont an 8. Now, moving on to the green extra cards, Artificial Impact. Not as good as Cease to Exist because it doesn't kill two things, uh, but better than the blue one because it does answer the card permanently, and you also get a nice random discard out of it. Artificial Impact is going to get an 8 for me. You definitely play it if you open it. Speaking of cards that you definitely play, if you are playing an Android leader, every copy of Flash Bomber you open, you just slot into the deck. Worst case scenario, it's a 10k combo on the defense for your leader, but as we already talk about on these videos, Critical's really broken when it comes to uh, Limited. So giving any of your androids Critical uh, just means, it's just, it's rough. It's like almost like having Furthering Destruction Champa, honestly, in your, your Limited deck. So I'm going to give Flash Bomber an 8. It can just steal games. Uh, it just denies so much from your opponent. All right, moving on to yellow. Let's talk about Jiren. Jiren is the most generically good leader in the set. If you don't know what to do, don't know what to play, if you are not somebody who plays limited or does these pre-releases often, Jiren is the leader for you. He is just good. At the worst case, regardless even if you're in Universe 11 or not, you can always choose a card from your life and take the 5k power and draw. It means this is a 15k attacker on the front side. And on the back, it is a 20k that draws a card when it attacks. That alone is good enough to win you an entire pre-release with no other synergy. If you are in Universe 11, he does get some really sick tricks that let you pull off successor early. And he has this really sick activate battle that makes it so it's hard for your opponent to kill you. And basically guarantees that you will get multiple turns uh, or extend the game by multiple turns. I'm going to give Jiren an 8. And I know that seems unfair because I think he is a cut above the other leaders that we talked about, but I don't think he's quite a 9, and I don't really think any of the leaders in the set are a 10. We will be talking about a lot more leaders in the next video because we have to talk about the obvious surge leaders as well as the reboot leaders. That will, uh, But for the most part, Jiren is the safe pick, 
and he is the easiest card to open of all the leaders. He's you know a common. Some of the other leaders that we'll talk about are not commons. They're much more difficult to uh, open in packs. So yeah, Jiren again, safest pick you can pick. High eight, maybe low nine. Great leader. Speaking of great, Android 20 Mastermind Architect. This card is incredible for a rare. So one cost can trip. For, uh, is really good already. That's going to get us at least a six. What makes Android 20 so good is you can pay three to get a 17 and 18 that costs four less from your drop area and play them. Their skills are not negated. They don't come into play in rest mode. This card is great. You get to play this turn one. You get to combo off the 17 or 18 to p defend your life early on. Then turn three, turn four, pop this guy off, and then just go to town with some of the cards that we already talked about, like the 18 that's critical, or the 18 that we'll be talking about after this card, which, you know, Android 20, we're going to give him an eight. He's great. Next up is Android 18, Under Your Skin. Four cost 20k blocker, like Belmod. Great at defending our life. Great at pressuring our opponent's life. Just good stats overall. Has this really sick activate battle where you can switch one of your opponent's cards to rest mode. Doesn't seem like much, but this gets past blockers if you sequence correctly. And it can basically fog uh, at least one attack a turn if your opponent missequences. So in the hands of a skilled player, this card is very, very strong. It is just a very, very good uh, value uh, engine. It will protect your life quite a bit uh, and it will allow you to steal games, which means that I'm going to give this card an 8 because it's just... It's so good on so many levels. Next up, we have Titan Toppler. The permanent almost will never happen unless you are just absolutely getting destroyed by your opponent, in which case you probably lost. The main draw to playing Titan Toppler is his auto. When you play him, it negates the skills of a card, so you can either use it to stop a blocker and go through for a game, or you can freeze one of your opponent's cards that are in rest mode and it won't uh, untap, which lets you stabilize games uh long enough for you to deploy your super rare bombs and stave off their super rare bombs. It's just it's a really strong effect. If you guys have never played any of the freeze effects, we've had them previously. There's things like um, uh, Shigesh has had this in the past. These just effects are very good and limited. They might not seem like an instructor, but they're just very, very, very strong. I'm going to give Titan Toppler a 7. I think it is a good card. I don't think it's as good as 18, but it is a really good card. The only reason I'm not giving it an 8 is because we'll talk about a strictly better version of this card in just a minute. Next up is Android 14. Stoic Fist, four cost, 15K is terrible. The activate main will almost never ever occur because as far as I can tell, there is no Android 13 in this set. So you will never get this. It's just a four cost, 15K. It is not good. I'm gonna give it a two. It's, it's not good. It's probably the worst yellow card in the entire set. Android 15, Vicious Vendetta is significantly better though. Three cost, 10K. When you combo with it, if your leader is green, you get to put this card into play in rest mode. Restand the energy is spent for it, and you get to take up to one or two life. So this card is self-awakening, card advantage, successor fuel, relevant early game attacker, for all for one. Really, really, really good card. Uh, you just jam it. It's just, it's just good. We're gonna give it a seven. Next up is Hellfighter 17, the Neutralizer. So this is a three cost. That's a counterplay. So it really is a two cost. Uh, 15k and when you play it you choose one of your opponents battle cards and negate skills for the duration of the turn This card's great defensively. It doesn't seem like it's great though It turns off invoker. It turns off double strike. It turns off triple strike It turns off quadruple strike if your opponent doesn't have the ability to activate the Jiren It turns off critical it turns off barrier if you somehow have a trick that can kill something on your opponent's turn It's just good, right? You're just gonna play it. So we're gonna give it a seven Jiren righteous leader Three costs, 20k is an outrageous stat line. That already would land you a seven. But if you are the Jiren leader, you get to get two cards from your hand or drop that cost two or less and put them into play. Almost always choose the cards in the drop. That means that you are getting 10k worth of combo power for free on top of this already ridiculous stat line. And then also that could potentially enable successor as high as seven just by itself. This card's great, 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 great. If you're Jiren, you need to play as many of these as you open. I'm gonna give it an eight. Next up is Binary Blade Casserole. Two cost 9k is whatever, but it does pull a 5k combo out of your deck. So in reality, this is two cost to get a 5k combo out of the board. And then obviously you can combo this card as well. And it sets up Successor, which is pretty good for those of you who are trying to get a Successor uh, deck together. Somewhere between a 5 and a 6 for most people. If you're in Jiren though, this card is an 8 because it's literally two free combo power uh, every time your leader swings. It's excellent in Jiren. 
Next up is Khalifla. The time has come, and the time has come for me to apologize because I said there was no Khalifla in the last video, so don't don't hurt me for that. Um, so yeah, this card, when you play it, you get to switch a blocker, basically, to rest mode, and then it has this really sweet battle on top of its already sweet stat line of 2 for 15k. You pay 1, you give it 5k, and then you get to play the Kale that we talked about in the previous video for free. That is a lot of value. I'm going to say Khalifla is a 7, probably a low 7, for you guys, unless you have the Kale, if you have at least one Kale, I would just splash it just for this combo because it's that good. So yeah, I would give Khalifa an 8 if you have the Kale. Next up is Kunshi, Threaded Energy. If you're in Jiren, this card's a 5. Uh, yes, Barrier's nice and all, but you're not going to be setting up any crazy things. Removal's not super prevalent. Uh, and who's like really trying to kill your 2 or less cards, let's be honest here. So yeah, this card is really good. It's more of a constructed all-star. Again, 5 in Jiren. If you're not in Jiren, it's closer to like a 2. It's not really worth playing. Cards that are worth playing though, whether or not you are Jaren Vuan, Dynamite Blaster is going to get a 7 for me. It is cheap blocker, which means it is a cheap way to protect your life. It is relevant at every point of the game. It's just good. Next up is Trio of Dangers, Mark of the Wolves. For some reason I read this and I think Fatal Fury. Uh, so 4 costs 20k with no effect. Um, yeah, I mean that's an okay stat line. We talked about it, so I'm going to give it at least a 5, even if it is basically a vanilla. It's over overrate. But there are worse cards you could be playing, and it at least, like, paying 4 for 20, it at least it will potentially win you the game. Next up is Margarita, Adorable Assailant. This is the other card that we talked about with Titan Toppler. This is the card that is strictly better. It is a 2 cost 15 with the same effect as uh, Titan Toppler, where it blanks a card and it freezes something, uh, and it doesn't untap. And that's excellent and then on top of that if your opponent does get rid of this outside of say other, something other than battle they kill it they warp it whatever then they have to randomly discard a card from their hand which is excellent upside uh margarita is a really good card in my opinion and i'm going to give her an eight uh one of the better yellow uncommons in the set so moving on to the yellow extra cards justice blast um in the grand scheme of things this is worse than the green one definitely worse than the uh the red one and it's debatably about the same level as the blue one it permanently answers anything but it doesn't give you the draw like blue does to kind of make it worth it um the additional effect just isn't really all there so i'm gonna give it a seven you're gonna play it if you open it no matter what because it's hard removal um but again there's not really any additional effect to this Light Bullet. Uh, so this is basically the new Flying Nimbus. It's a negate, which means we're just going to auto jam it at an eight. You're almost never going to use this uh, this activate uh, effect to get the, the make them so they can't swing with more than one guy unless you're Jiren. I think Jiren and maybe uh, Doctor Zero are the only people who can really take advantage of this effect. Um, yeah, no. Again, it's just like a it's just a negate, so it's going to get the eight from me no matter what. And then the last card we're going to talk about is Mind Expansion, which is a one cost to give your Jiren leader 10k in critical, whether that's offense or defense. It's basically like we were talking about with Flash Bomber. You're going to play it if you open it, if you're the Jiren leader. It's really good. It's not as good as Flash Bomber because Flash Bomber works on all of your battle cards. Mind Expansion only works on your leader. Um, but that's still good enough to get a 7 from me. So there you go, guys. That's all the green and yellow cards. Join us next time for the black cards, the multicolor cards the signature attack rares and the reboot leader rares which we'll all be talking about in the next video it'll be a long one obviously if this has been helpful to you guys leave us a like if you really enjoyed this video please consider subscribing if you're new here it really helps us out here a ton at 3xg productions as well if you're trying to level up your game make sure to check out the 3xg patreon i will also link that down in the description below and that is it again enjoy your wednesday ladies and gentlemen key bye